Hayes here with another Design Your Day devotion. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are a good God and your tender mercies endures forever. You are holy, you are righteous. You are the God of all creation, the God of our salvation. Father, we thank you, Father, that your hand is upon our lives, that your truth is our shield and our buckler. We thank you for Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word that feeds us. Father, we say that we have found your word and have eaten them and they were a joy unto our soul. And we thank you for the revelation that's going to be revealed unto us today by your Holy Spirit. So now we commit this devotion into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please uh, like the video and please share the video with your family and your friends. So uh, let's get the gospel out together. So we've been talking about strongholds of fear. Uh, yesterday we ended with the uh, law of the mind, but you know, let's go ahead and uh, read our, our text, Second uh, Timothy 1 and 7. Uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. And also we've been reading Second Corinthians 10 and 3, and it says that, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, again, your, your thoughts, the pictures you're focusing on in, in your mind, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. And again, I said that we are ended with talking about the law of the mind. That's in Proverbs 23, 7. And it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And I added something to that. Uh, again, your, your thinking uh, controls your life. It says, as a man thinks, and I'm adding hope, because they're synonymous terms, imagine, synonymous terms, uh, talking about the way you see yourself, your attitude about your life, your perceptive, how you think, the pictures that you're focusing on uh, actually controls your life. Again, as a man thinks in his heart, so it's his, your Actually, your thinking is what creates your character and your personality. And your character and your personality are going to decide how you respond, react to any situation. And because of that, there are consequences, good or bad. So, again, your, your thinking actually controls your life, set the course of your life. It runs your life. It governs your life. It creates your re reality. And I... I read this to you, and I'm going to just go back over some things I did touch on yesterday, and then we'll pick up from there. So all day, and this is how you're living, just think about it, uh, we we uh, actually have thirty to 60,000 thoughts a day, and, and a lot of times we're not even aware of the thoughts that we are thinking, and these thoughts are actually molding our future, controlling our lives, creating issues in our life. So all that you are imagining, seeing yourself, who you think you are. Now boy, that's that's powerful there. All day you are thinking, you are you're imagining, you're seeing yourself, who you think you are, and who you think you are, that's how you're gonna respond to every situation. Uh, this is why you know we're supposed to cast down the wrong thoughts about us and embrace the thoughts that God said that uh, we are, uh, our, our identity in Christ Jesus. So all that you are imagining, seeing yourself who you think you are, and, and by law, that law of Proverbs uh, 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You are setting the course for your life and creating your reality. So if if you allow fear to fill your imagination, it will re be reflected in your demeanor and your character and your action. It will short circuit your faith. It will cause you to draw back, stop you from moving forward in God, and cause you to be a spiritual runt. <laughs> Man, you don't want to be a spiritual runt. You want to be a spiritual giant. That's that's the idea. So, and I said, faith is boundless and exceeds wherever you are in life. So, this thing has. Uh, where ha where are you now in life? how far your decisions have brought you in life right now. Of course, we don't want to be there. We want to be a, a lot farther than we are right now. And we know there's so much more for us to experience. 
but our faith is boundless and it sees wherever we are right now. That's what you got to understand. I was trying to uh, paint a picture for you with those statements there. And I'll keep working on it. And the Holy Spirit is going to, he'll give me the words to say to you. To, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Amen. So God has greater things for us to experience. But if we allow fear to anchor, think about this. If you allow fear to anchor you where you are in life, again, where you don't want to be, faith's creative power is also anchored. He cannot go farther in life because of your thinking, your your thinking has brought you to the place you are right now. And let me say this, this statement here. Where you are right now is because of your thought life. So if, for you to go further, as you think, if you haven't gone further and you want to go further, that means that your thinking is tapped out. So that means that you need new thoughts, different thoughts to move forward. This is your imagination. This is why I was saying earlier that... Uh, Faith exceeds where you are right now. It goes much further. It so is powerful. It is. It is endless. It it doesn't wane. It doesn't short circuit. It's all powerful all the time. But we actually control our faith. Give. I'm gonna put it this way. Another word. We give our faith an assignment by our thinking. And I I said yesterday our thinking. They're synonymous. Synonymous hope. And uh, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith needs hope to create substance in your life. If there is no hope, faith cannot do anything because uh, faith was designed to create substance out of the things you hope for. So again, hope is synonymous with your thinking because they both are uh, producing images in your heart. Hope is a divine hope is you get from the word of God. As you think about meditate in the word of God, you see the uh, revelation knowledge. It reveals to you what you have in the spirit, what already exists for you. Now you have hope to hang on to. Yes, this is mine. I can have this. That's the hope. You get that image. Well, thinking is the same thing. Your imagination is the hope. And then your hope gives uh, hope. Your thinking, your imagination gives faith his assignment. So, and I said that if, you, if you're thinking small, that's all uh, faith can produce in your life. Because this is how you see life. This is as far as you can go. You, if you live a small life, you, you can't go any further. I mean, excuse me. If you live, if you live a small life, it's because this is the way you think. You're thinking small. If you live a big life, that means that you're thinking big. Though so here we're talking about fear. If, if you're devastated with fear, it's because of your thought life. You see yourself fearing. You see a scenario where you're going to fear. And if you keep seeing that, actually, Everything in you is going to create that fear in your life. That's exactly how faith works. Faith is going to create that for you. Jesus said, according to your faith, be it un unto you. So you don't want to be a spiritual runt. You want to be a spiritual giant. And to, to be able to do that, you're going to have to resist fear. You're going to have to, when, when you experience fear in your body, you're going to have to stop and say, wait a minute, where did this thought come from? Because you know it's a thought. That's what you have to understand. Evidently, you had a thought. You saw something that caused you to fear. You see yourself operating a certain way. You see yourself failing, and then that brings about fear. Well, you got to see what, you know, the scriptures. I can do all things through Christ who sends me. The Bible says God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. See, you're supposed to cast down the fear thought. You're failing and begin to see what the word is saying. God is with us. He's for us. He never leave us. He's working on our behalf. He's there. He fights our battles. See, these are things that you need to think about. And if you think about them enough, you start acting on them like they are part of you. So the problem is you've been thinking fear thoughts too long. And it, it, as long as you keep thinking fear thoughts, that fear thought is going to get stronger and stronger. And that's what you call a stronghold. So now a quick, quick fix is not going to deal with fear in your life. You have to learn how to discipline yourself to cast down the thoughts of fear that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus. You have to you have to see yourself with a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind, sound discipline, self-control. You can control yourself. You don't have to be nervous and shaking all over the place. 
You see, when that happened, that you've done it so many times, your body is disciplined that if you, if you get the slightest thought of a fear, your body goes into spasm. You, you train your body to act that way. And, you know, uh, if you uh, basketball, you know, we have championships about right now. Um, uh, those basketball players, they have to shoot so many free throws and three pointers, jump shot to train their body to work along with everything that they are doing. So you train your body to shake when you have a thought. And if you have the slightest thought of fear, your body go into spasm. And by that, then you have more thoughts of fear because, oh, I'm, I'm afraid. Now, now you're piling on. So you're going to have to learn how to control yourself and then to control your body. That's, see, oh, okay. Well, I know I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm really going after right now. Let me get back to my, my notes here where I really, really want to go. But that's a good thought there, though. So uh, I'll call him the, uh, third John 2. He said, Beloved, I wish you may prosper, be in health, even as that soul shall prosper. So you will prosper as your soul or your imagination prospers. To the degree your thinking, imagination, or your hope is, is the degree that faith can create that in your life. There we go again. It, all of this controlling your faith, this, it giving your faith an assignment. That's the hope. So your imagination or your hope writes the check, and faith catches it for you. So I charge you, when you sense fear trying to rule rule you begin to see yourself with boldness and confidence you're going to have to take a stand wait a minute you know you might feel a little shake a little nervous and wait a minute begin to fight for the right image this is your practice and you're training yourself to live this life it's a fight a good fight of faith you're going to have to discipline your thought life you're going to have to discipline your body it's going to take practice doing this to be able to walk in this peace with this soundness and this wholeness so, <laughs> I'll see you next, not next week, but the next day tomorrow morning. God bless you. Amen.